So our project here is so far it doesn't really do too much, but we're starting to set it up that it'll take user input <coughs> and do something with it. The something will be storing it in the pouch database. So again, for simplicity, we're going to keep all our code simply in this one file, and then we'll later on separate, a, separate it out to the appropriate files. So we need to start now writing some JavaScript code to work with, with pouch. So we will go to line uh, 20, give yourself a new line 20, and start a new script tag. I'm going to write all of our code embedded down here. Make sure it's after the PouchDB reference, of course. Um, and the very first thing we're going to do, well, we need to create a variable. This variable will store the reference to our database. The database itself, in a technical level, is going to be stored onto the device, into the web browser if we're running it on a web app. This can be called anything we want, but the documentation and tradition is simply DB. We're creating an object, a variable called the DB, equals new. We're creating a new instance of an object that we have access to with the PouchDB library space. Then we have to write it in this way, capital P, pouch, db, capital db. We're creating this, this object, and we need to specify at this moment what is the internal name of the database deep down in the, you know, in the bowels of the app. What's the internal name? We don't really have to deal with this internal name. We're going to deal with db, but internally, in quotes here, we need to say what's the name of this database. We'll call it SDCE Classes. It can be any name we want, of course. Next line, console.log. Oh, did you see? Did, did this really work? Because what could happen is we wrote PouchDB on line uh, 19 wrong, and this doesn't work at all. So at the very beginning, I just want to check, did we really create a database? We're going to do a console db log. Uh, and we've got a, a built-in um, get database info method, which is simply db.info. Uh, callback is optional. So we'll do right here db.info method. In the console, output some information of this database. At the very least, this will confirm that we've created a database. Save it and run it in Chrome. We'll see it's slightly different in Firefox. We'll, we'll compare. Let's look at it in Chrome. Save it and run it in Chrome. Pull up your developer console, of course, F12. You should see then if you look, so I haven't done anything, I've just run it in Chrome. In the developer's console, I guess something says promise, and then if you open that up, a bunch of other output, such as object, inside of that, blah blah blah, db name, sdce classes. The name of my database should appear there, so a bunch of other data. And that's the result of doing db.info. So if you didn't get anything, if you got an error, we need to fix that right away. We can't do anything else unless this works. Did that work for everyone? So we have an object of db that will allow us then to do the put and the get and update and all of that.
seen for a few <coughs> people a slightly different output than I am on my Well, because right now uh, the only thing that matters for us to work is PouchDB. Um, this so, is saying that it's not finding jQuery in your folder. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so hopefully you got like my re result. Uh, at least one person got slightly different results. Didn't exactly get this promise, but slightly different. Um, that should be probably okay. Uh, we'll see as we go on. Now, the, this uh, db.info method with the open and close parentheses executes info and gives us info about the database. If we didn't have this whole line, though, there's another way to look at the database depending on the browser. So since I asked you to open this in Chrome, let's take a look at this. Uh, I have my developers console open, and on the top row we have elements, console, one of them should be resources. Click on resources. A while ago when we talked about local storage, I had said here's a place for you to look at local storage data being saved to your browser. Well, resources in Chrome is also another way for you to look at PouchDB data. Now, PouchDB, since it's cross-platform, it, it has a, a method deep down in itself built in to work in all the browsers and devices. It just works behind the scenes. But deep down in there it checks, well, what browser am I running on? What device am I running on? Because each browser and device has its own standard on how to store this kind of data. Uh, 
web databases were a a problem that people were trying to figure out as we as we started the HTML5 era of web design and the thing about that is that everyone was thinking of a standard and standards are great but everyone can make a standard and so some web browsers had a certain standard to save their data other browsers had a different standard the two big standards were web sql and indexed db we're running in chrome and so chrome is favoring indexed db notice there's a little triangle here if i run it in other browsers it may use the web sql doesn't matter which one it uses it's just that it will work because the way pouch db is set up it'll it'll work so if you don't see a triangle to open index db that's another indicator that something's not working and when i open the index db viewer i see there underscore pouch sdce classes anything i create via new pouch will prefix underscore pouch and whatever you called it in the parentheses isn't that exactly what i typed in the parentheses sdce classes and Chrome created underscore pouch underscore SDCE classes. I'm hovering over and it says version 5. We downloaded from the website version 5 point whatever. If you then open that further, there's a variety of ways to then view the data stored in the database. For example, by sequence. In my case, I've already been playing with this earlier, so mine says I've got this, I should have cleared this out beforehand, but mine says I've got some data in my database. Yours is all empty. Let me clear my database here, actually, and run that again. Run that again. So it should show up like this, by sequence, nothing. But eventually we'll see key and value. That's JSON, key and value pairs, isn't it? So I can see my data by sequence, I can see it other ways, uh, how is it stored in the document, I guess I didn't fully clear it out, uh, I guess down here. So here we go. So we can see our data in different ways. It's empty right now, we haven't saved anything to the database, but at the very least, here is a way to view the data that's being stored in my database. It's persistent data. I can close the browser completely, run the browser again, and if I had saved data, I would see it there in the resource view, index DB. It says SDCE is still here. Now, mine had that data because I was playing with it earlier, and I didn't change the name of the database. So I reused the name of the database. But the point of this is once we get it into an, to an app on a device, it's going to be saving this data permanently on the device. Uh, it'll be it'll be persistent data, like local storage, but with more space to store and more robustness, like version checking of your data and such, and um, replication to a server when, if we were to get to that. So here's one way to view it. If I open it up, um, I guess don't, don't really try this, but if we open it in Firefox. Firefox should also have a little database viewer, but I think theirs is not as good. Um, where did it go? It's somewhere in the settings, so don't worry about it. Storage, I guess. Storage index DB. <coughs> yeah, so it's not even intuitive where it is. I have to go dig down here in the settings of Firefox to view the database. So we'll just be opening it in Chrome. It's the quick way to view our data. It's going to be the same thing. Show me by sequence, and if I had data saved, they would show in, Chrome, in Firefox. Don't worry about it. We'll be looking at it in Chrome. So what, for your user, like, your, like your enable it, this is like local storage, cache, like make it... Bigger? It's not bigger, like enable it to, in order to, for this feature, like index, db, it should be automatic. The browser should automatically allow this to happen unless you uh, have, for example, save no cookies or save no history. Yeah. I've seen that happen. If, that if, like, user this feature, yeah, right. if the user knows how to open it up, for example, also in, uh, in, in private mode, I believe if we open it in private incognito, it does not save it because it's incognito. 
that's not quite a use scenario because most people are going to be yeah, there are ways to check it if it's disabled, but there could be the possibility that the user disables it. Yes. Um, that's why we could also do, for example, checking. Is there a, the ability for me to use IndexedDB, yes or no? If there isn't, then I can make a pop-up to display to the user, please enable the ability to save databases. We're going to assume the user doesn't know how to do that, so we'll go on. Um, so what I want to do is, when the person clicks the button, the person typed data into those fields, the person clicks the button, and then that stuff is going to get saved to the database. So next line. Let's create a way for that button to work. For that button, that when they click on it, it retrieves the data in those fields. This is going to be our jQuery. We could have done this with document.getElementById, etc. But since we already have jQuery on our taco project, we have jQuery here, so we will be able to use the jQuery selectors. So we've got btn uh, add class. We'll have, uh, we've done this before, so I, I can just kind of speed through it a little bit. I've seen this several times before. That's our basic syntax. Now that button up there is active. I'm going to reference here then a function because it's several things need to happen. I need to collect the data of at least three fields, maybe later on five fields. I want to then do many other things, store the data, etc. So we will then reference a function here called add classes. This is our function that lets us add classes to the database. Therefore, on the next line, we need to define what add classes means. Trigger result event handle the event with this function. Break that into a couple of lines because we're going to have a lot to work with. Perhaps as you get more savvy at this, you can skip this part, but just a very little quick basic alert to say that it works so far. Again, as a beginner, it's very good to test these things. Test yourself before you get too complex, because this will get pretty complex. If this little simple thing works and you're 10 lines later, you're like, where did I go wrong? Oh, I misspelled function at class. At the very least here to save it, click the button to save a class, you should get a pop-up that says works. If that doesn't work, check your spelling, make sure add classes here is the same as here, make sure that this is a pound btn add class, because that one up there is id equals btn class. Right. Uh, where did it go? Right there, btn btn add class. The button up there has that ID. We reference it here. Unclick that, go to that function. Where's my function? Save class. Should get a simple pop up. Nothing special. Comment that out or delete it. Okay, so what I want to do is retrieve the values that the person has entered into those boxes. We will create variables to store those. So these are variables where their scope is just this function. These variables that we will create will only be used within this function. We can't use them elsewhere. We could, but we just need them in this function at this point. So we'll create a variable called class CRM. We'll set that equal to. Here's where we're going to reuse the um, jQuery selector, but in a slightly different way. Up here, we're referencing a button on screen, and once we've clicked it, do something. I don't need that. 
I need what did the person type in that field. So we have at the end dot val. This retrieves or sets the value of that form field. What did the person type? Give it to me. Which one? Well, the one called CRN field. Store it in a variable called class CRN. I need to do that to the other two form fields. So at the end here, we'll do a comma because we want to do this for three things to save ourselves a little bit of effort here. Then we've got class um, name. Doesn't matter the order. How did we order these? Yeah, we did CRN name and then instructor. So class name equals same sort of thing. This jQuery selector, we called it name field. See why I named these rather um, not name field. What do you call it? Name field or class field? Class field. Class field. And the same thing, dot val comma, we have one more field to capture. Um, inst, we can call it inst or class inst. Just pound inst field dot val, and now we'll close the statement with a semicolon. We'll terminate the statement with the semicolon. <coughs> this is shorthand. Instead of doing var class crn, var class name, var class inst, I use the one var keyword, comma, then the next one, comma, then the last one, semicolon. We did that at least one other time before. Doing it one more time just to save ourselves a little effort. And again, totally unnecessary, but if we kind of line those up there, that looks consistent. To confirm that this worked, next line we'll do console log. class CRN. Console log. Class name. Optional, of course, but since we're going to be building something rather complex, it helps us to kind of check ourselves as we work. This will allow us to at least test. If we save it and run it now, type some stuff in those boxes click the Save Class button, check your console, and it should show you what you've typed in those boxes. Every time you type something new and hit the button, it should show up in the console. This is a sort of a proof of concept. Is it working so far? Many things could go wrong at many points here. As we check ourselves little by little, we hopefully avoid syntax errors and logic errors because logic errors are the harder one to, to work with, to, that is, to debug. Check if mine works. Pull up your console. You don't have to get fancy at the moment. I'm just going to fill in some gibberish. Save class. There's my gibberish. Whatever I type into those boxes, I click Save Class, they should output to my console. It has not been programmed to clear the fields. That would be helpful. 
you see that most commonly. You type something into a field, you save it, and then the field's clear. We'll do that eventually. But at the very least, whatever you type into these things should show up. The clear fields button clears the fields, but your console's the same. Here's the code so far. The whole point of us asking for all of this data, of course, is to save it to a database. But all of this data, these three fields, in theory, um, describe one class. These three bits of data should be grouped into one object. This is where JSON comes in. This is where JSON comes in in order for us to... Um, bundle it into one and then uh, save it all as one little bundle to the database. Next line, create another variable. We'll call this a class equals curly braces. We're about to create a JSON object. I believe we can, we should, it will, will, so that it's readable. I'll break this into a couple of lines, tab that. And the way this will work is, again, some sort of key value pair. That was our whole JSON lesson. Within the curly braces, we've got the key and the value. Well, every pouch DB document or object needs the underscore ID. That's a unique identifier to separate all your data. Doesn't matter in what order, but might as well put it as the first one. Well, that one doesn't need to be in quotes, the second one, because it's the value inside of class CRN. Whatever the person typed, and we got that value it's in class CRN, we will use that as the unique ID for this object. Comma, because we then also want to store, we can make this up, this will be the title of the class, which will store class name, what they typed up there. And lastly, we're asking for the instructor, so class inst. No final comma because it's the last item in my object. For fun, console dot log a class. Show me in the console that data bundled all together is a JSON object. Save and run that. My previous output showed me what I grabbed from the fields. My latest output says, you've got an object here with an ID of whatever you wrote, a title of whatever you wrote, and inst of whatever you wrote. So if you write something real, like whatever this class is, number 128, 
to j whatever class name android one constructor campus save that that's a little bundle an object if I change this like this I kept the same CRN change the class change the instructor save it saving this data so if I look inside of the If I look inside of the um, res resources tab here, now I should have something that I could look at. Index DB, pouch, database, by sequence. Oh, yes, getting ahead of ourselves. So we're saving this data at least. We're bundling it together as an object. Next, we need to save it to the database. So here is the here is the um, db dot put. Next line, db dot put. This has an open and close parentheses. We've got the method of put. The documentation tells us, well, we need to put some document with an ID, for example, and then deal with the result of either being there being an error or a positive result. Those are the two big things built into, these, this is built into PouchDB. You get these callbacks of either you successfully put the data in the database or it failed. Well, if it was successful, do something else. If there was a failure, do something else. So we need to have some sort of data that we're putting in and some sort of uh, error or some sort of positive result. The data that we're putting in is all bundled into a class. Take that whole JSON object, put it into the database, comma, because we're using callbacks, we have function callback, open close parentheses, open close curly brace. This can be called anything, but we're calling a callback to make it obvious, uh, just because we really have to deal much more now with callbacks as we get more advanced, whereas other times when we have some sort of function, anonymous function, we run um, another function without needing any parameters. But here, the result is that we either have uh, an error, comma, or a result. So put this data in the database, and either we will get an error or a result in this order, according to the specification. The first callback is an error, the second callback is a positive result. And this we can call this error we can call it bad, comma, good. It doesn't matter. We can call it kitty, we can call it comma, cat. We call these callbacks here, this, these parameters, whatever we want, but this makes sense. Um, and so within these curly braces, we will run our checks to see, well, what do we do with a positive result? What do we do with a negative result? So I'll actually break those curly braces over into a couple of lines, where then I can create an if else 
block. Because I'm going to check is there a positive result? Do something about it. Else there must have been a negative result. Do something about that. Or vice versa. Check if there's positive. Check if there's if it's negative, then do something about it, etc. We'll do it like this. Within the if, we'll say not error. The exclamation point means not, so we are checking for no error. Again, this can be done multiple ways. We will do it different ways just to see variations. But here we are seeing if there's no error, and what we will do is we've got that, that pl div placeholder on screen. That might be nice for the moment to give the user feedback that says class saved or success, or data saved, or something. So we'll use that placeholder which is on screen, pound div, we call it result or results? We called it results, div results. Dot HTML. This is like what we did with the uh, the social networks. We had some social networks to display on screen. This is the same sort of method here, but what we're, what we're displaying on screen is um, we're displaying a message to the user class saved. For the developer, for us, We'll display result. Result is, is a little bundle of feedback that we can work with. And it shouldn't really say anything that interesting just yet. The error one is the interesting one. Uh, but what's happening here is for the user, we will display class saved. Nice and user friendly. For us in the console, give us you know the raw data. Therefore, else. That must mean there was an error. Right here we're checking if no error, do this, the positive. If there is, uh, if, or else, then the result was there was an error. So under else, we will again display onto, onto the user. I'm just going to copy the same item here. But this time, instead of it saying a message, positive message, we can just say error for the user console log error because our callback we're going to see over and over it it's works over with Cordova, it works with Pouch, it works with many of these things that some function and callback is invented which kicks back some data, kicks back some result according to the documentation of the framework. And then we can deal with with that like here we're simply putting it in console output. Uh, let's see how this works. At this point save it and run it. Open your console I'm going to save something. Again, you don't have to get fancy with real data. Save class. 
I got my console output here, which is just a collection of the data. Then I get object OK, true, ID, in my case 12, revision, some revision. Um, that's the result of, of this right here. Result. It's giving me a JSON object as feedback with these particular items of OK, ID, and rev. It's giving us back a JSON object. Remember when we were working with the social network, we had response object dot URL paraphrasing, response object dot name, response object dot desk dot URL. That was a property of that object that we were retrieving. This result is an object as we're seeing in the console. So if I do result dot rev, it gives me back only the revision number of the thing that I've saved. We saw that without specifying a particular property, we have the abilities of we have the properties of OK, of ID, of rev. Now, let's say I'm saving item one, item one, item one. So I save it. It says, okay, great, you saved it to the database. If I then change this, but not the CRN, conflict, I get no status 409 name, conflict message, document update conflict, error true. Now I get back an object which has status, name, message, error. So I'm, re I'm trying to reuse the same ID, and as I said, ID is the unique one. Only one thing in your database can have that ID. And so the feedback, which is right here, console.log.error, give me back the object. Display the console in the console the object of error, which is made out of the keys and values, the keys of status, name, message, and error. All of these, you know, are esoteric, like, okay, what other errors do I have? I can go look it up in the documentation. The name is conflict, message is this. For fun, what I can do is so it displays error to the user here. And just to show you this, but you probably wouldn't really want to do it, if I do error.message, we already know that I have the, the one CRN, so I'll try to use it again. Write something else, write something else save class. On screen to the user, it displayed document update conflict. That is coming from, again, the message property of the error object. The reason I'm saying you might not want to do this is because oftentimes these internal developer elements are for the developer. They're going to scare the user. So is the regular user, what document update? I'm trying to save a class. Update conflict? What's going on? Some of these errors are much more you know, scary looking for a regular user. Um, so you wouldn't really want to do it, but you kind of get some interesting feedback if you call that. Yes? You checked it and it works, you said? Or have? I didn't check. I just it shouldn't, because I, I believe, according to the documentation, it should have the underscore ID. Okay, it's internal design. Exactly. The specification is we have to reserve the word underscore ID for this to work. Another is like, hey, like, why is object, right? It's A. I think that just also has to do with their implementation, their specification. For some reason, they 
have n, I guess, for no. It's an error. I don't know. It should, I would think logically, F also say an object. It's an object. Right? Yeah, the whole thing is the an object because it's in the curly, yeah. curly braces. But I'm not exactly sure why it says n instead of object. But it is an object. I'm sure it's just that the, the way that they've uh, programmed it, that, that's what gets kicked out instead of it's an object. If we open it up, then we see the same sort of thing. It seems like it's only for the error message for the, for the OK, like the success message is mm. object. Exactly. So if I add something else, it's object. If I try to reuse the same one, it'll say N, conflict. Well, we're looking at the uh, console output here and a little bit of output. But now if you go again to look at your resources, index DB inside of your pouch, inside of by sequence, here's another way to look at your data. There's, there's they are as objects in sequence, 0 to 4. In my case, because I was writing data before, my keys are out of order. Don't worry about it, but yours will be from 1 to whatever. And then 0 with 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and then keys, 1 through whatever. And there's my data as Chrome is seeing it internally somewhere inside of its you know, user files. Like the software that we install on our computers has these bits that it saves throughout your hard drive. If we poke around somewhere inside of the Chrome installation folder, we will see this somewhere. But here within the Chrome um, resource browser screen, here's how we can see it nicely. Document store is another way to look at it here. Here it shows it also sequence numbers or index numbers and it show it by key. Here it's showing it alphabetically and then within the right side the actual object with a couple of other things. If I add you know, class ABC refresh that so I have ABC automatically organized because technically then JSON is not sequential unless you're doing it as an array and here Chrome is showing it to me alphabetically internally it's not really alphabetical in the database and whatever I added <coughs> the object is further in there key value should be what you put in the CRM. It might be you might have re been retrieving your values. Over here you might have mixed these up a bit. Class CRN should get CRN field, class name should get class field, and class inst should get inst field. If they're a little bit off then We'll do one more thing and then we're getting close to the end of the day. Uh, we're seeing here that as we add data to the, the database via these fields, um, the, 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 these input fields stay populated. Um, I would like these to be cleared out so that the person doesn't accidentally try to add the exact same item again. <coughs> It's going to keep giving this document update conflict or whatever we titled that there. So we want to clear out these fields in addition to saving the data. And even more, we want to clear the fields if they're trying to save the same data to avoid these errors. So what we'll do is, back here on our, on our, on our put, We'll start with the if, no error, if it's saved properly. We'll say clear fields. This is a function that we will invent to let us clear the fields or do other things.
obviously this won't work yet. We have no, there is no real function called clear fields. We'll invent it right now. And what we'll do is we will, um, we will, we will write it right here. Uh, let's make sure you, we're going outside of the curly brace of the add classes function. We could add it within it, but then its scope will only work within the moment we do add class. We might want to reuse that clear fields other times. So make sure you go after line 49 or so, which is the end of your add classes. Maybe I'll add a little bit of a comment here. And add classes. This is a way for me to quickly see as I have lots of lines of code. That should relate back to our starting of our add classes function. So here's a, just a quick marker for us. Because at the next line, we will do function clear fields and define what clear fields does. There is a jQuery a jQuery way to do this, but I forgot to look it up, so we'll do it with classic JavaScript document dot get element by ID remember we gave an ID to our form when we were crafting our form we gave it an ID so we can manipulate it this is the classic JavaScript way to do it I forgot to look up the jQuery way to do it uh, but then we're gonna have here brackets We'll, we'll check that one, one moment. Uh, form class, and then we're saying at the end here, dot reset. This is like that reset button that we have on screen, whereas on screen the person has to hit the button to clear those fields. The point of this is that someone enters input, it's valid input, and clear those fields so that they don't accidentally input the same data, especially the same CRM. And we're putting it in a function because conceivably later on we'll put this back into our project where we have the ability to play a sound or do vibration. We would add here the whatever it was, navigator.vibrate in Cordova, in Taco so that it not only clears my fields, but it also does a little vibration to let people know you input it, and it worked. A little feedback. Check mine here. The way we check this is add some data that is not there already. Save class. We get the save class, and your fields will get cleared back to the placeholders. <coughs> so reset the form field with that unique ID. Because it's not jQuery, don't put the pound sign there. Because it's we're saying here, by ID. Okay, so obviously we still have, we still have a lot to do. 
we're just at the end of the day, and so looking back at things, we are setting ourselves up with a database. Deep down, it's JSON objects that we're saving. It's JavaScript based. It's portable and compatible. It can replicate to <coughs> an external server. It's reminiscent of JavaScript. It's lightweight. Doesn't need a server. So far, then we've started a few of the operations here. Remember, we've got save data, retrieve data, update data, delete data. Basic operations of any database. Uh, we still have more to do. But here, at the very least, we're saving data. We're not retrieving it yet for the user, but we can see it as the developer. When we come back next week, it'll be a brand new class, part three. We'll have to go through the enrollment process. And then we'll continue right where we left off, where we start to deal with, OK, let's start to retrieve this data from the database to display it on screen to the user in a pretty way. Then let's give the user the ability to edit the data. They made a mistake. They misspelled something. Let's let them do that. They want to delete a class. Let's let them do that. So we need to still do the other operations that we have. We've got one out of four. Um, any general questions? of what we've worked with so far before I put my code in the folder. So what's that into the DB coach DB object page? It's, it's like a session, like it is two session, or is it forever? It's forever. If I close my browser completely, it is still going to be there. If I say I closed it completely, I'm going to open it again. I won't add any data. And if I look on my resources, it's going to keep growing. Within the specific, within the specification, yes, we can we can release all of that. Um, I believe it's just pouch db, uh, db dot delete or something. We can see it here. Delete database, which is simply db destroy. And so then it will delete your database. You have some callbacks if you'd like to do other things. But then this will free up all that data. You delete the app is gone too. Right? Yes. If we get it to the point where it's the app, if you just delete the app, then it deletes the data too. If we never replicated it anywhere, it's gone. Any other general questions? Okay, so I'm going to put my code in the folder. Next week when we come back, it'll be a brand new class, and we'll keep going.